So I want to make sure you're aware, we do a TLD live chat every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. I'll put a link to it here. This is an opportunity for you as the consumer to join us and ask questions that we may not have covered within the review. We also have special guests that join us such as brand managers, product developers, and even CEOs. So come join us and get your voices heard. All right, on with the show. Oh, hey everyone, Wall Shipman Thin on Defense. And I don't know about you all, but we're trying to find the best range finder we can for a six millimeter arc series so that we can actually reach out to a thousand yards. But there's so many different doodads and whatnots and widgets on each one of them that it's hard to tell what's any good. And some of the price ranges of these can be from 500 to a thousand dollars. So we're gonna start looking at some range finders and see which ones work perfectly for hunting and also which will work best for us as we reach out with our six millimeter arc out to a thousand yards. So in this review today, we're going to be reviewing the Leopold RX 2800 TBRW. That's a lot. Let's go into all these features and see what they do and see if they help you and see if they're even actually valuable or worth the cost. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to unbox this and then we'll go through all the features and then I'm actually going to go through a series of tests to see how it performs and then you can determine if it's right for you and we'll do a final recommendation. All right, let's get started. All right, here's our box for our Leopold 2800 TBRW. Uh, if you're looking for the actual SKU number, it's listed here on the bottom in case you want this exact version. And here's all the specifications listed on the back if you need all the details. But tell you what, let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. Let me just take this top cover off. Wow, okay, wow. Look how fancy this little box is. Leopold likes to make some really nice packaging. All right, let's open this up. Okay, here we go. We got our cool little silicone packet. And then here's our battery. So it comes with the battery. It does use the CR123A battery. And here's our pouch that holds our rangefinder. It has a nice little bungee attachment here that makes it easy to open. Let's go ahead and get this out of here. We can it's all wrapped up. Let's just get this out of it. Wow, okay, so check this out. Look how nice this looks. It has a really nice finish to it. Now there's our mode button. It looks like that's where our battery goes. Um, we can change our focus there and no real details on the back here. But see, here's the focus knob. It moves really cleanly, so there's no real issues here. And there's our actual ranging button, but look at this texture on the top here. It's like super grippy. I don't know how well you can see it. It's really easy to hold onto where this is like really smooth. This just holds onto the hand really easily, both on the top and the bottom. Oh, and you can put it on a tripod, which is amazing without buying a $60 mount. Oh, it drives me crazy. All right, see here on the front, uh, nothing really all special here. Yeah, look at that. It fits so well in the hand. I'm really impressed by the ergonomics on here. Like it's instantly fitting perfect in my hand. I, I'm really gonna enjoy using this range finder. All right, so what else do we have here? Let's take a look at the instructions. All right, so let's see what's in here. Looks like a lot of information here. Okay, so here's our basic introduction, um, how it works, what it can range to. So here it ranges to about 1100 for a deer size target, safety and precautions. Yeah, don't shine in your eyes. Definitely don't do that. Uh, here's kind of how the different displays work. I'll explain it as we go. We kind of talked about the features already, so we know about that already. Uh, how to read the display. Again, we'll go over all that. It really goes over a lot of stuff. Oh, at least let you know when there's no power anymore. That's nice. How to measure distance. How to clear the last distance. There shows kind of the max distances you can measure and then here are the specifications. Uh, in reality, this keeps going on and on in detail. I'm going to go over all this with you and not subject you to this. So we're just going to skip this for now. All right, also comes with a lanyard inside the box. You can connect it onto the rangefinder. I always like to have a little lanyard attached. And then we have the battery tray. So it's really cool how you can flip it down like that and then use it to turn to loosen up the battery. And then you can just pop it right in. Just pay attention to the polarity. And then you can just put it right back on with that cool little tab that flips up, flip back into place and you're good to go. And we can test it out. There we go, we have our display. Okay, so now we got everything unboxed. Now let's see how it performs. But in order to do that, we have to understand how it works first. So let's go over the two main features. You can range in two main different ways, the TBR or with the line of sight. So let's go over TBR first, cause that's kind of its claim to fame, right? So 
TBR actually does some angular calculations that actually gives you the corrected distance. So instead of just looking directly at a target and saying what it is, it'll take into account the angular change. So there may be a variation by a few yards. Now out to a couple thousand yards, I don't know if that's really gonna make much difference, but we'll see when we get out to the field. So then of course there's more options. So we need to choose a couple different menu items if we're gonna use TBR. So let's start with BAS. BAS is basically just means you don't wanna make any other changes. You just wanna use that adjusted angular measurement and that's what it's gonna output. So after BAS, you have an option for MOA or mil. In this setting, it'll output your mil or MOA adjustment. And then in the bottom measurement, it'll actually show you the line of sight distance. So it's not the corrected distance now, but it does show you your correct mil and MOA in theory, we'll get to that. And in the final TBR setting, you have the option for trig. And what this does is it not only gives you the distance to the target, but it also gives you the height to the target. So since you have the distance and the angular measurement, it can calculate all that for you. Like if you wanna make sure a tree wasn't gonna fall and hit on the house, you could see how far and how tall it is and if it would actually reach it or not. I don't know if I would use that. So for the group setting, you have to choose the number that corresponds with your ballistic group. And this will kind of determine the rise and fall of your bullet and it'll calculate into the mil and MOA adjustments that we talked about in the TBR settings. And then we'll go into some testing and see if it actually works. All right, so for the setting for wind, you can turn the wind on or off. Now when you turn it on, that basically says there's a 10 mile an hour wind 90 degrees from you. There's no way to put in any sort of variable wind, so you have to make calculations based off that. So let's say for instance, there was a four mile an hour wind instead of a 10 mile an hour wind, you would then take 40% of the adjustment that it gives you. So say it gives you a 2.1, you would need to do 40% of that, which is what, nine? Uh, so then that would be if it was a 90 degree angle, but let's say it's at a 45, so you need to cut that again. So it's given you a 2.1 and you really need to do a 4.5. So there's a lot of math involved. If you wanna use the wind function, um, maybe it'll get you close. That's a lot of math, a lot of thinking. I'd probably just aim and shoot. The next setting is the display setting. So you actually have four options. You have two low settings, a medium setting, and a high setting. I left mine on high almost the whole time, and even then, I, I wish it was a little bit brighter. There's not any auto setting, though, to move between the different illuminations. The next menu option is the unit of measure. You can choose between yards or meters. I use mine in yards, so all the measurements you're gonna see here are in yards. Then we have the option for last target. You can turn this on or off. Basically what that means is it takes the measurement on the last laser to reach the rangefinder. This means you can get longer distances more accurately and it's not gonna take the closer distance. Like if it bounces off a tree or something, you're not gonna get that one first and take that as a measurement. So if you're aiming for a longer distance like we are, last target is very useful. So we're gonna keep that on in our settings. And then the final option we have in the menu, you can choose between the different reticles. You can choose like a crosshair, or a tiny crosshair or the large crosshair and the small crosshair. I like to have all of it because then I can see it more clearly. All right, so let's put this through a series of tests and then I'll show you some of the settings that I ended up with that I think work the very best. So let's start with ergonomics. I want to say that this rangefinder fits amazing in your hand. The, the way it fits and everything is just great and it has this really nice rubberized coating where your hand would fit. So you don't have to worry about the rangefinder slipping out anywhere or just going falling if you had with slick hands from maybe being out in the rain. Um, it's a really great rangefinder in terms of ergonomics. They did a lot of things right here. So for the next test, let's take a look at the reticle. So I really like all the reticle options that are on here. The fact that you can have the, the large cross or the small tiny cross here, or both of them together really adds to the versatility of it. If you don't want one, just change it to the other. So from a reticle standpoint, it's pretty awesome. So for the next test after the reticle, let's look at the illumination. Now I have to say during this test, the illumination is pretty poor. I know it's very bright out here with the snow and everything, but I have to make sure to record when it's a little bit dusky out because you can't see this reticle at all. And I have to say the video that you're seeing is pretty indicative of what I'm seeing. On a super bright day, this reticle is very hard to see. And I have some trouble ranging things, particularly when it's super bright, seeing what it's even outputting. So I'm not super happy with the illumination. 
It also doesn't have an auto illumination feature. So then when I would go out with it at night, I would blind myself because it would be set on high and I have to fumble through all the menus to get it set back down low so I can actually not blind myself. Uh, for this test, we want to talk about the BDC accuracy. So how accurate is the TBR or TBRW? Now, um, I'm going to immediately say that it has failed this test because it's not accurate at all. And that's just because of the way it works. What happens is you choose a ballistic group and then they tell you what you need to zero to. So in my situation, my 6.5 Creedmoor, 140 grain ELD match, they want me to zero at 300 yards. Now, I don't I don't know who is zeroing at 300 yards, but it's not me, particularly when I have scopes with their own BDCs that I have to follow and match in order to make all the, you know, bullet lines line up in the actual reticle. So some of those I have to zero at 50 or 100 yards. So I don't really have the option to then zero at 300 yards. So when I range something at 300 yards, it gives me zero. And if I range it at 400 yards, it gives me maybe one mil or a few MOA adjustments, which is completely incorrect. You have to do everything off of a zero that I don't have the opportunity to use. So then we start talking about the wind function. I'll kind of throw that in there too, the TBR, W, the W for the wind. The fact that the wind is a set value, you have to calculate that. So like I told you before, you need to do know what percentage the wind is off a 10 mile an hour wind and then make those multiplication measurements and know that the wind is coming at a 90 degree. So then you also need to make some adjustments then off that math to adjust those mill measurements again. The, the wind function will get you reasonably close, um, but I think general guesswork is going to be just as good. All right, for this next one, we're gonna do a close range test. Uh, the closest target I could measure is five yards. I don't know who's measuring things closer than five yards, but for those who wanna know, uh, that is the minimum. Okay, for this one, we're gonna do the long range test. And this is where range finders can get a little bit confusing because they'll be marked at being able to read, you know, a thousand yards at a reflective target. But I want you to remember, you're probably gonna cut that in half for an actual like shooting target or an animal. So if it says it can do a reflective target, target out to a thousand, it's probably going to read about 500 yards for an actual target or like a deer sized animal. So for this one, it's marked at a reflective target for about 2,800. So let's measure how far we can go with it. So I found that reflective targets, I could get out to about 1800. Honestly, I don't think I can get any further because I don't have anything else further away. Close range targets, I could get about 950, right around a thousand. But besides that, it kind of has trouble with any smaller targets, which kind of goes in line with what it says on the packaging for about its range. So be aware of that. Any smaller targets like shooting out to a thousand would likely be good. But if I wanted to shoot targets out to like 1300 yards, I would likely need a different range finder. All right, so for this rangefinder, the settings that I recommend, I just use the line of sight mode and turn everything off. I really like how far this rangefinder can reach. It can go a lot farther than a lot of other rangefinders that we've used, but I don't find the TBR to be useful. It's limited out to 600 yards and I need to zero at 300 yards. And then the wind function just does a bunch of weird stuff that just kind of throws me off. So I just use the line of sight mode. I put the display on high. I show all the reticles so I can actually see the reticle and I try to make it as easy to see as possible. But those are the settings that I recommend. Uh, with line of sight, it shows me the distance to the target and the angular measurements. And then I just plug those into a ballistic calculator. What you don't want to do is do the TBR and like the BAS settings so it shows the adjusted range and then put that adjusted range into your ballistic calculator because then it'll adjust for it again and it's going to throw you off. So if you're going to use a ballistic calculator, you're going to want line of sight and then your angular measurement anyway. So it works out really well. So going on our rack and stack for our rangefinder board, I'm gonna actually split this into two, one for shooting and one for hunting. We have reviewed one other rangefinder, my SIG 1800 BDX. Now for shooting distance, I'm actually gonna give the edge to the Leopold 2800 because it lets you go out so far, you just chop off most of the options because you're not really gonna use them. Um, but it actually is a significantly better in terms of distance than the SIG 1800 BDX. Now, when it goes to hunting though, it really goes to SIG because you can actually make adjustments for wind, you can make adjustments for the ballistics, you can make adjustments for your zero. So when you range find with the SIG 1800 BDX, it spits out exactly 
your adjustments, your mill or MOA that you need, depending on the range and your bullet characteristics. So from a hunting aspect, it's phenomenal that you can just range and it's gonna spit it out, put it on your holdover, fire. So I guess we need to do the pros, cons, and do I recommend it? Uh, pros, I know we've been talking about a little bit, the distance. I like how far it can go. So it can reach a lot of the targets that other range finders can't get to. That's the biggest thing that it does and thankfully it does it well because it has a whole ton of cons. Uh, starting with the first con, the illumination. I can't see it. I have problems with the illumination. I don't like how it's not auto. It, I either can't see it or it's blinding me. I can't find a comfortable in between and I'm constantly messing with it. Uh, the other big con is the TBRW is completely non-functional. I, I don't know who's zeroing at 300 yards or 200 yards. Um, it makes it so that the numbers it's outputting to you are just confusing. And then if you are using it, it then outputs the distance in line of sight mode, which can be useful if you're gonna put it into a ballistic calculator. You may wanna see what it's spitting out that's completely wrong and then know your line of sight to correct it. But it's just not useful. I can't find any constructive way to use it. Uh, so my last con is that wind function. It's really just there to tell you it can do wind, but really it's just you doing the wind. Um, you're probably gonna be able to calculate that faster just by standing there and putting your finger in the air and figuring it out and making the adjustments than going through all the math that would be required in a split second that it shows you uh, 1.3 uh, for your adjustment and then having to figure all that out. So then do I recommend this rangefinder? For long range shooting, yes, I do. And I think Joe is gonna do fantastic with this in his six millimeter arc series. This is gonna be easy for him to identify targets and range them out to a thousand yards. So I'm excited to send this to him. Now, do I recommend this for hunting? No, actually I don't. I think there's some much cheaper options that would be better for you that's gonna give you some cooler features and would be able to adjust for those ranges and give you the appropriate mill and MOA adjustments faster and more accurately than this rangefinder would. So if you're going for that thousand yard shot, this is a great option. Just know you're not really gonna use TBR and all that because it kind of stops out at 600 yards anyway. So. This is definitely a long range shooter rangefinder, not so much a hunting rangefinder. Big thanks though to Brownells for sending us out this TBR 2800. Uh, now we can actually go finish out our six millimeter arc series. I know I want to see if Joe can even hit a thousand yards. So now we can at least range and he can't lie to us and say that, yeah, it was a thousand yards. No, it wasn't buddy. So now we'll know for sure. All right, everybody, I hope you learned a little bit more about range finders and it helped you to pick out one that may work better for you. All right, everybody, take care of yourself. Walsh out. All right, so now that we have every, let's make sure we have the sound on.